Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And, and now, look at it. Because you came from God, because you are born of God, you, you, listen, it is normal, natural with you to be great. Greatness is normal. Hallelujah. Think about it. A goat, the animal called goat, no matter how much a goat desire to be an elephant, <laughs> no matter how much a goat cries to be an elephant, no matter how much a goat prays and fasts to be an elephant, unless a miracle happens and the life in the goat is changed to that of an elephant, it can never grow to be an elephant. You know why? What makes a goat a goat? It's not the four legs and the horns. What makes a goat a goat is the life that a goat has. So if a goat ever wants to be an elephant, the goat will require a miracle. But for the child of an elephant, for the one born of an elephant, it is normal to be giant. It is normal to be big. Why? Being big is part of the genetic makeup. For an elephant child to grow small like a goat is a misnormal. Are you listening to me? Now in the same vein, if you are a child of God, being great is part of your spiritual genetic makeup. Succeeding in life is part of who you are. It is not, it's not an abnormal thing for a child of God to be great. The abnormal thing is that a child of the living God is small. Hallelujah. There is everything wrong when a Christian is small. So, but do we all have to be rich? Listen, being great has nothing to do with finances. Are you listening to me? Even though finances is important. And the truth, however, is this. There are some things you cannot separate. There are some things you can separate. For example, in, in, in Second Chronicles chapter 1, you know, the Bible told us how that God came to Solomon and said to Solomon, ask what you want. You know, the Bible says Solomon offered a thousand uh, bulls as offering, a sacrifice to God. And that night, God came to Solomon and said, Solomon, ask what you want. Whatever you want, ask. It was like God giving a man an open check, a blank check, and said, sign what you want. Then Solomon said, Lord, you have been gracious to your servant David and have made me a king in his stead. He said, but I don't know how to go out before this great multitude of your people. I don't know how to lead them. Give me wisdom that I may be able to go out before them and come in before them. God said, Solomon, wow. Because you have not asked for riches for yourself or security for yourself or, or the life of your enemies, because you haven't asked for these physical things, he said, wisdom I have given to you and riches so that no man has ever seen before you. You know why? You cannot separate wisdom from riches. I'm talking about divine wisdom. Remember, Solomon asked God. Asking God, God is a deity. So whatever comes from a deity is divine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Solomon asked God for wisdom. So God said, Wisdom I have given to you, and understanding, and largeness of heart, and riches. Why? If God gives you wisdom, you will be rich. You can, they are inseparable. Praise the Lord. They are inseparable. It's just like saying that 
I want some oxygen, but I don't want water. We are told that, uh, uh, so no, it's just like saying, I want some, some water, but I don't want oxygen. Just give me some water. I don't want, I don't like hydrogen. I don't like oxygen. Just give me water. It is not possible to have water and not have oxygen and hydrogen. Why? Because water is a combination of hydrogen and oxygen. Hallelujah. In the same vein, you cannot be divinely wise and be poor. It's not possible. And we discussed last week, Tuesday that wisdom is ability to hear the voice of God. It's hearing the voice of God or being led by the Holy Spirit. If he lead you, if he's the one leading you, you can't be small. And more so because you came from him. Listen, everything must be connected to a source for survival. Everything. The fish came from the water. For if the fish is going to be alive, the fish must remain connected to water. Hallelujah. The human body came from the soil, from the earth, from the ground. If your body is going to, be, to survive in this world, your body must continue to feed on earth. You say, ah, I don't eat sand. <laughs> Everything you eat is earth. Everything. From your maize to your rice to your is all earth. Your body needed to survive. In the same vein, your spirit must stay connected to God. Are you hearing me? For triumph. You disconnect from God, you are on your way down. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You don't need to pray to be big. You just need to, to be connected to your source. Jesus said in John chapter 15 from verse 1, he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Can we read it? John 15, John chapter 15 from verse 1. Glory to God. From verse 1, Jesus said, I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman. You see, I'm the true vine. My father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that he may bring forth more fruits. You see that? Now you are clean through the words which I have spoken unto you. Verse 4. Very instructive. Abide in me. And I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. He said, I'm the vine. You are just the branches. Abide in me. Stay connected to me. Stay in me. And if you stay connected, you say you bear the fruit to be normal. Success will be normal. Prosperity will be normal. Greatness will be normal. But not, sad to say, not many of us are connected to our source. We, we don't even remember. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're not conscious. When we have things to do, we run through all human strategies, we run through all human ideas, only when human have failed, do we then remember that there is a God? So what? We make him our last resort. No wonder life is full of struggle for many. We only remember him when we are beaten and our back is sore. Then we'll come back to him, oh God. Life of the Christian was not designed to be up and down, forward and backward. Progress a little and regress a little. The life of the child of God is designed to walk in one direction, upward and forward. He says, Stay in me, stay connected to me. As the vine cannot, the branch cannot bear fruit except it abide in the vine. He said, No more can you unless you abide in me. 
Hallelujah. There are good success and there are bad success. Are you hearing me? There are good success and there are bad success. The Bible told us, is that this book of the Lord, Jesus chapter 1 verse 8, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate in it therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Say, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and have good success. Good success is the success that comes from God. The success that promotes God and the kingdom of God. The success that gives glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God wants you to have good success. There's nothing wrong with a Christian having too much money. Nothing wrong with it so long as you live for God. You know why? Because if you live for God, your money will live for God. Your money will serve the purpose of God. Not using money to oppose God. And you'll be shocked to find out how many Christians are opposing God because they became rich. You know, when you were broke. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you were broke, you love God. Prayer meeting, you are there. You know, fasting always. Speaking in tongues oh, more often. You're always there. Every meeting you attend. And now God gave you a business and gave you money. You become too busy for God. Shame on you. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you didn't have, ah, you, have, you were happy to give your tithe and offering because ah, my tithe is only $5. It's nothing. So you give the $5. Now God blessed you and your tithe is $5 million. Now you are beginning to try to analyze this church. What are they doing with money? Eh? What, 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 is the, what, would, what would the church need $5 million for? Look at you. When the money was small, you were happy to give it. Now it's big. And now you want to question, do we really need to give? Can, can't I just give my tithe anywhere I want to give it? Now you are deciding for God, I you must do it. It's okay. Okay, I don't give my tithe to church. I just bless people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, listen, something about money that you must know is this. Money is a revealer of character. You may not know who you are until you have money. Money will reveal you to yourself. Some people are wicked. Wicked and proud. The only reason they are humble is because they, they have no choice. <laughs> That's all. The only reason they are humble is because money, poverty humbled them. Give them some money. If they can sack God, they will sack him. If you are that way, you lack capacity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm saying you came from God. You are here to serve God's purpose. Hallelujah. So what? You live for God. Don't let things control you. Control the way you relate with people. There were people you were comfortable with yesterday. Now, small money have entered your hand. You are no longer comfortable. <laughs> huh? You are you no longer comfortable with them. Maybe God allow you to know them so you can lift them up. Lifting people up doesn't mean giving them money. But you cannot lift somebody who, who is not close to you. To lift one up, you must be close to the person where the person is. Who are you living for? What are the things that define your life? Like some people in the world today who have uh, had money and think that because they have money, they know some things. You know, they, they volunteer to advise the presidents of nation and advise everybody else. Everybody else must, must uh, you know, must just accept whatever they say. Having money doesn't make you wise. There's, a, there's something called good success. Praise the Lord. And a Christian should not emulate anyone who is not living for God. Don't make any man your role model who is not living for Jesus Christ. Why is your role model? Because you have money? Hallelujah. Because you have money? 